Do you have a trauma or stress-related disorder? I'm Christy Bundekumar, a psychiatric nurse practitioner with over 20 years of clinical experience and a lot of personal experience in trauma and stress. I am concluding a series on the trauma and stress-related disorders in the DSM. This is demystifying the DSM and I'm going to kind of wrap up, do you have a trauma or stress-related disorder? Now, the, here at the end of this chapter, they have the other specific trauma stress-related disorder, and um, that can be kind of adjustment disorder with a delayed response. So maybe it wasn't right after the stress, maybe during, you know, right after the stressful situation, you, you know, responded, your adrenaline allowed you to, you know, really take care of yourself at that time, and then six months later, a year later, it kind of hits you, or kind of a prolonged, persistent, uh, you know, other specific trauma-related disorder, right? So we always have these at the end of the chapter. We also have unspecified trauma stress-related disorder. That means you basically don't meet the criteria for any of these stress disorders that we talked about. However, um, you are experiencing some distress. Now, it is super important for me as a medical professional and for even those of you that are coming in for evaluations to understand that, you know, you come in, sometimes I have patients come in and they say, I want this diagnosis. Well, we have to go through this process of differential diagnosing. There, you know, these are like a cluster of symptoms and they come together for you know, in different areas. And sometimes it is a stress response. And this, this chapter was all about trauma and stress response. But sometimes there's either a differential where you're actually dealing with, um, you know, may, maybe major depressive disorder and we need to have more of a medical type intervention or a psychotic disorder. Now, Specifically, I look at disassociative disorders when it comes to trauma and stress response. If you look back at the PTSD video, we talked about one of the criteria for PTSD is an intrusive uh, thought. It could be a dream, a hallucination, but flashbacks, if they are happening frequently and they're not always directly associated with the trauma, we may need to look at a differential diagnosis of disassociative disorders, right? So, you know, remember that we as professionals are looking at all of these DSM diagnoses. And it's not just how you feel you fit in. There are neurobiology changes that occur or there's neurobiology predispositions or genetic things. Um, if you have a comorbid substance abuse, if you have been using substances, you know, even legal substances, alcohol, cannabis can change the biochemistry in your brain. And we have to take those things into consideration. So trauma and stress disorders are typically, you know, isolated to trauma and stress. But you can have a differential where it's actually something else, or you could have comorbid. You could have major depression and PTSD. Okay, so you know, making sure that we're you know we're looking at that whole picture that we're treating appropriately. Uh, in this chapter, we talked about these trauma responses. In children, we have reactive attachment disorder and disinhibited social engagement disorder. But these children become adults. What does that look like in adulthood? We have, uh, you know, we talked about PTSD, very long video because the, there's a lot of criteria there. And there's a, a lot of complexity because some of it is a psychological response and some of it is actually a neurochemical response. And we know that trauma can change the brain. I have another video specific to 
that presentation may look differently in children. We talked about acute stress disorder and adjustment disorder. And so those are the trauma and stress related disorders in the DSM. We are going through this series of demystifying the DSM. So subscribe, like, follow, make sure you're getting notifications to new videos and come with me on this mental health journey uh, because I believe that each and every one of us is mentally strong. If you got to the end of the video, you obviously enjoyed some of the content. I have a lot of free content out there. I am really trying to empower everyone to find their mental strength. So subscribe, get the actual notifications, and let's embrace this journey of mental strength. See you there.